I know you've probably had some amazing stories. What? Tell me something that was just unexpected, that was cool, or, or just just something that you thought was you know one of your favorite times on location. I mean, there's 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 really so many so, so many great experiences. Uh, I mean, I think movie making is like childbirth. You know, you're in hell for a while, <laughs> and then three days later, oh yeah, it was fine. It's no big deal. Um, you know, uh, going back a number of years uh, on Sea Biscuit, we filmed in Kentucky, in New York, all over California, and wherever we went, we had weather problems. We had floods, we had winds, we had tornadoes that came through our set the day before filming in Kentucky. We had frozen tracks in Saratoga in September. Uh, just huge challenges. Every day there was something new. Memoirs of a Geisha, big tsunami, uh, not tsunami, uh, um, hurricane. <laughs> El Nino. Uh, on, on Memoirs of a Geisha, we had an El Nino year. We built a, a huge set out in Ventura Farms and it flooded. It rained and rained and rained. And we spent days and days and days sandbagging and stopping the floodwaters uh, coming in. You counter that with the experience I just had on, on Top Gun, which was very challenging but very rewarding. Meeting all the folks uh, in the Navy who we worked with from pilots to maintainers to the air boss to base commanders to commanders of aircraft carriers who all bent over backwards to to work with us um, and to learn how how the navy really operates you know we don't unless you've been in the military you really don't know how the military operates i mean these folks sacrifice you know we think we sacrifice when we are shipped off to some other city and stay in a five-star hotel and <laughs> are fed three meals a day and get per diem and housing on top of it yeah that's that's so difficult. so difficult. But then you look at these folks that have been on deployment, you know, some folks been on, on deployment six or seven times in 17, 18 years, mm. away from their families, away from their kids. Um, it's, uh, it puts things in perspective, it puts things in perspective. And they always do it with a smile on their face and a willingness to help. And uh, that's probably, in 30 years, probably the most rewarding uh, experience I've had. On Excellent. Film. Excellent. Yeah. So, being in it 30 years, what's your uh, what's your game plan? Are you going to just be a fixer? Are you going to continue on? What's what? What do you where do you see yourself five years from now? Not doing movies for a year at a time. Uh, I see myself maybe doing a city or a state or a location on a movie. Um, I could see going in and helping out on a project like I did in this little project last fall. Um, I, I see spending more time with the Location Managers Guild International. There's a lot of work to be done there. Um, and traveling a lot on my own dime, as opposed to Paramount or Warner <laughs> Brothers Universal. Or a fam tour, which, uh, a fam which is always fun. Fam I, tours I are always fun. So what a fam tour is, is a, a city or a country, country. Uh, invites location managers to, hey, look, come film with us. And, and uh, I usually see it on Facebook, and everyone's having a great time and, and getting to see a new uh, city or country. And it's, it's an exciting aspect of the, of the job, too. One of the things the Guild is trying to do is to work with, with uh, sponsors more on fam tours internationally as well as within the United States. So that's an initiative we're going to really crank up this year. Good. Uh, a lot of opportunities for our members to go to new places, a lot of opportunities for, for countries or cities or states, uh, the sponsors, to, to meet new people and see how things are done the way that we do them in New York or Atlanta or, or Los Angeles. There's a, there's a hunger out there for education. And in spite of filmmaking being Far, a far-flung business. We make movies in every city, state, and country in the world just about. But there's something about L.A. If you're from L.A., they want that L.A. perspective. So there's um, a lot of desire to get uh, location managers from Los Angeles to come out and meet with people and speak with people. It's sort of a two-way street. We can, we can show folks the benefits of film tourism, uh, uh, the indirect uh, uh, benefits of filming like that. Um, and I was in Chile a couple of years ago, and I was meeting with some city officials. They didn't know what film incentives were. They didn't have any idea of how much money we spend. I, I listed for these folks where I spend my money in the course of, of, a, of a production. And then I talk about where our production spends its money from paint and lumber mm. to buttons and cloth and gasoline and two-inch pipe for the grips and and all the different little <laughs> things um, and their eyes just you know again like like pie plates they were like they were blown away at at how far into a community 
uh, a film reaches as far as where it spends its money. Um, and I'd like to think that I had a little bit to do with them creating their film incentive. I knew they were working on incentives, but I think this sort of jump-started a little bit because I was able to speak with decision makers, people who have influence with the national government, um, and I know it's worked to their benefit. I know they've gotten production from that. That's excellent. Yeah, the, the money that production does bring in. And people say, oh, well, you know, why are we giving you know, these big companies incentives? It's the money that they put in the pockets of companies like mine, as well as coffee shops, uh, hardware stores, everything that's needed for production, it's overwhelming. And, and the data that uh, is out there is really compelling to, to show how much money you can infuse in a city, a town, a state, a country. Yeah. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, if incentives are, are, are used the right way, can, they can really be beneficial. Um, and the reach that, that a film company has, even a small project coming into a small town, can dump hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is not a lot in Los Angeles, but in a small in small town USA, you go to a restaurant, you give them the opportunity to make second meals for you for 30 or 40 days. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of it's money, lot for of sure. Money. Now, I've actually, uh, the California On Location Awards just happened in December. Uh, met with a lot of people that I've known like you for a long time, but a lot of newer people that are coming into the industry. Uh, met with a, a woman, she um, just worked on uh, Wonder Woman 1984, and she's here in LA and she's trying to get her, her started in the industry. What would you say to someone that's trying to start to, to become a location manager or get, get into the business? Take any job you can take because you never know who you're going to meet on that job that could give you the, the step up that you're looking for. Um, be positive. Be willing to do just about anything. If it's not somebody else's job and you're asked to do it, as long as it's safe, help out however you can. You never know um, the impression that you're going to make on someone uh, on, on the job site. I mean, I've sent out, when I first moved to LA, I sent out hundreds and hundreds of resumes. Never got a call back. <laughs> Every job I've gotten has been a referral. Basically, the only way to, 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 to get jobs that way is, is to be helpful, to be positive. Speak with uh, the folks at 399, Teamsters 399, and see when the roles are done and when you might be able to get in uh, as, a, as an entry-level assistant. Um, it used to be very difficult. Now with the amount of production we have, there's long periods in the year when the rolls are down, when, when 399 is accepting new people into the, into the fold. I think the same is true in, in New York, in Atlanta, and other places. LA has a high bar, other cities have lower bars as far as entry. If you're working in Atlanta, you can walk into the union, write your check, and you can be a location assistant the next day. Wow. Uh, which is good and bad. Yeah. It's good because it gets you in the door, what I've seen in a lot of places, uh, a lot of incentive states, I call them, uh, is people move up too fast. They get two or three jobs, all of a sudden they think they're a location manager. Yeah. I had a 10, 11, 12 year career in, in the real world before I got into the film business, and then I worked as an assistant for seven years. And I wasn't a spring chicken. I didn't take my first location managing job until I was over 40 years old. Wow. Uh, so I t what, one thing that I can, uh, uh, council folks is don't move up too fast. Don't just be striving to get a bigger paycheck, but learn the job. Work with as many different people as you can work with. Work with uh, on as many different kinds of projects as you can work on. Meet as many people as you can. Pick up the best from everybody and try to incorporate that into your, into your personal uh, work style. Excellent. Yeah, very good advice for sure. Yeah, it's, it is... Uh... It is interesting looking back at, at, at even my career, and, and there was a lot of good, and there was a lot of ugh, but that ugh makes you who you are, makes you better um, uh, at the job, and, and if you didn't have that, you wouldn't be as experienced as you are. So I've slept a lot of sandbags. I've emptied a lot of trash cans. <laughs> I still pick up cigarette butts and trash on the set. Um, I never ask anybody to do anything that I haven't done or that I wouldn't do. I, I try to lead by example, by, you know, walking down the street and you pick up trash. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, our job is to keep the set clean. Nobody, every, it's everybody's job. Uh, it it helps keep you grounded, I think, and yeah. it, it, it's, a, it's a good example, I think. That's great. That's great.